Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're well. So I, I had a conversation the other day with uh, an individual that who I got into a fight with. They didn't believe we should, the government should pay for people's health care. Rot. And uh, I said they should. And the crux of this video is me relaying the same information I spouted at him here because i am still got a bug in my bonnet about it and I should talk about this. He asked me, how do you pay for it? How do you pay for people's health care? And I said, this is basically how. You institute three new sources of, of tax revenue for the government. That this is key. These forms of tax revenue do not impact people making less than, let's say, two hundred thousand dollars a year. Um, this, these are all ta these are all new taxes among people in higher tax brackets and the only thing that could possibly affect people is if you are trading stocks but even then for most americans their iras are are, are either auto managed or if they do buy them it, they, they do buy or sell stock within them it is exceedingly rare that they do so um and it's also not at a volume where this particular tax would necessarily be that much so let's so let's start with the income. So the way income taxes work in our country is you have the first twenty that for the first twenty thousand you make uh, tax rate. Uh, every dollar above about like let's say like above twenty thousand. So let's say you make twenty thousand and one dollars. The tax effective tax that you would be paying the government would be six cents. I think it's like six, seven, like I think or like eleven cents, you know, something like that. You, you, when you pay taxes, um, um, when you the way that we have a you know, um, the way our taxes work in this country, you it, it's it's built in such a way that if you, you know. Get a better job and you start making more money and stuff it's you're, you're not going to be making less money you know the taxes aren't going to be so egregious that you make less money than you were making beforehand um it's structured in that way for the purposes of making sure that the like, people aren't afraid to see that new opportunity um, anybody that ever says to you that you know income taxes and stuff do that are lying to you or they're making enough money or so they're making so much money that that could possibly be the case and at that point they ain't starving and they not like us so the way I, so that, so now that i've explained basically how you know it works here's the crux the income tax brackets basically cap out about a, at around 395 uh three 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 hundred ninety five thousand. um i'd say have a lot more tax brackets so for Every two hundred thousand above that, um, so basically, let's say you're paying eleven percent for the first two thousand, for the next twenty thousand, like you know, like for, for the, like like so, for the first twenty thousand, you're not paying anything, and then the next twenty to thirty thousand, you're paying eleven percent on that, and then on, on all the money up between up between twenty thousand and fifty thousand, and then. Um, on the money between fifty thousand and eighty thousand, you're paying fifteen percent, and so on and so forth, and that goes all the way up. So what happens is, is that now between let's just round it up to a solid four hundred thousand, between four hundred thousand and six hundred thousand, you're now paying you know a percentage tax of that that's higher, and, and the percentage gets higher and higher as you go, just as you know, because the more money you have, the less really you need. Especially once you're making um, three to four times what you know the average American needs to like live comfortably middle class, um, which most people don't make anymore because we live in hell. But 
basically, uh, this income tax bracket goes up, and then once it hits a million, it, it goes into increments of 500,000, and then once people hit, you know, and then, and then, and then the number goes basically like once you hit $10 million, um, you, we hit you with a 90% tax on every dollar made above 10 million. And so what that basically in effect does is, um, you know, it, it, th this was the type of, um, this, 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 uh, would help with that, uh, significantly. Uh, the second, the second thing we would do, uh, would be change the, uh, would add a, uh, a capital gains tax to, of two cents tacked on for every share sold in a, uh, stock transaction. So what does that mean? So that means that if you sell a stock for a dollar and you sell a hundred, uh, stocks, you would have to pay $2 of tax on that transaction. And this is for all transactions. And there are millions and millions of stocks being sold every single second all across. So what this would do is this would do effectively two things. It would lower, uh, it would, it would, it would, it would restrict, um, uh, the speculative and gambling nature of our stock market, uh, and would temper you know, the, the goons on Wall Street. It would also generate obscene amounts of income. You have to remember, most uh, on the stock floors now, it's not brokers really anymore. It's just algorithms. You wanna know how I know that? Back when I was starting, back when I was getting ready to work for uh, JP Morgan Chase, when I was doing the training gauntlet, we, there was this thing we were doing, it was called um, um, Flow Monster, I think it was called. And the whole point of it is me, I was thrown into a team with four or five other randos and we coded out a bot algorithm, a bot to basically do stock trading on the floor. And that's how they do it now. Um, so this would effectively generate a large amount of revenue and uh, I would say put it straight into fucking social security. Um, I think that would be income tax as well. But he, whatever. Um, and third, the third uh, thing I would do is uh, institute a capital gains tax. What is a capital gains tax? Capital gains tax is a tax similar to how um, uh, you know, uh, a capital gains tax is essentially a tax that uh, is, I would put a, a tax on the value accrued on assets in the previous tax year. So what does that mean? So what that means is, is that if I have, if I own a house and that house is worth $10 million and it was, t it's worth $10 million at the beginning of 2023, at the end of 23, 2023, it has accrued an extra, let's say, million in uh in value so it's now worth at the end of 2023 a million dollars more so what i would do is i would recommend i would i would uh recommend uh a a 10 percent capital gains tax on asset portfolios on assets owned by individuals worth more than 10 than 10 million dollars so and i want to be very clear that doing it on more than 10 million dollars is important because there is once you get to a certain level um of asset ownership the only people that are going to be able to afford those are ex are are disgustingly wealthy individuals and corporations and um, I think that a capital gains tax on both individuals and on corporations would be valuable. So I don't. So the taxes that would come out would come out of um, the value group would come out of things like uh, asset portfolios such as uh, you know, capitalist groups and that nature. They, they would have to look at their 
assets in their portfolios, how much it had accrued, and then they tend to, they, over the last year, 10% of that goes towards funding things like healthcare and other social programs. Because, you know, they know what. Um, I know I said three at the beginning, but here is a bonus one. Um, I'd say we jack up the corporate tax rate to, to back to, I'd say, 90%. Now you must be wondering, Evan, why would you jack this up to 90%? Why is this not, like, this isn't a good idea. This is going to kill business. No, it's not. The only people that are hurt by a 90% tax rate, corporate tax rate, are shareholders. The only people that are hurt by that are shareholders. Everybody else in the corporation, from the CEO down to the janitor, get paid first out of the gross. Those are considered expenses. What 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 happens is so a little at econ 101 for some folks. Um, when the the money that a business generates in a in a year is called the gross. Once all all expenses and taxes are paid, that's your net. Your net is the is the free money that can get paid out in stock dividends, uh, bonuses to executives, bonuses to uh, uh, not even or not even not even to executives. Um, well, if they're in the form of stock, then yes. But it's primarily this net is the profit generated by the business, and it is generally goes to. Just the shareholder tells us about to say, oh, I think it's like other stuff. No, it really just goes to the shareholders because you know what can be written off on taxes? Employee pay. You know who's an employee? Everybody in the C-suite. You know what else? Ex expans expansions, uh, 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 R&D, investments in, uh, in people and products. All of those things, everything that a business would do with the money is considered an expense and it's tax deductible. And so what happens is, is that everything you would do to uh, what, 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 what this, and this happened back in the 50s, what would happen is, is, is that this is like Ford would, would do high pensions and they would do, um, you know, high employee pay and employee benefits. And then they would also expand and they would invest more in plants and they do X, Y, and Z and to lower they, they they do as many expenditures as they could so they could lower their gross enough that when it was converted to net, they didn't have to pay as many taxes. The only class of people that are hurt by a high corporate tax rate are the shareholders. The way our tax code is set up, businesses are, incent like, are incentivized to push that money into the business and it becomes their fiduciary duty to do those things to lower the tax bill of the company because everything else gets paid first before the taxes. Everything else gets paid before the taxes, the employees paychecks, all of the expansion costs, the benefits of people, the CEO pay, all of that gets paid before the taxes and all of that can be written off. And so what happens is, is that, you know, a CEO would have a fiduciary responsibility to expend as much as they could as possible to lower that for the shareholders. The way it works now at a 30 something percent tax rate is that um, there is no, because, because the incentive, because companies have a fiduciary responsibility to shareholders over everything else, um, most CEOs, what they will do is they will, you know, come in, have no experience working at the company, cut a bunch of things, cut a bunch of line items, cut pay, cut workers, run some try something, and just do austerity. And then, so on paper, by the end of their two, three years there, their four years, five years there, it shows that they have increased profit margins. They get a gigantic golden parachute payout, leave, go to another company, do it all again, and the company is not fundamentally doing better for the long term and is much worse than when they first got there. But as far as the shareholders are concerned, who are in charge of paying the CEO, so I'd say a 90% corporate tax rate. Now, do I, 
you know, think that shareholders should have as much power over, you know, corporate structures as they do and should have as many rights as they do compared to the rights of employees. Absolutely not. But this is the system we live in at present. And as much as I want to change it and work towards changing it, this, like, this is just, if, this is how we could absolutely pay for universal health care. These are new taxes. These are new taxes that will generate a fuck off amount of revenue without impacting substantially anybody, you know, who is a normal, regular, average ass American. It only affects rich douchebags who wouldn't piss on you if you were on fire. I just want to get these thoughts out. I appreciate y'all's patience. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to support me and other stuff I do, please consider donating a dollar a month at hmedia.gg slash tip. We get a lot of perks in our Discord, including exclusive and early access videos. Um, it is a boon to my mental health. I am very poor. Join the Discord, too. That's where you, your perks are delivered, and we'd love to see you part of the link's description. Have a good one, everybody, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Toodles.